What is going on, everyone? Welcome into the Brant Partial Show. So I wanted to talk quarterbacks for the 2024 NFL Draft, and I wanted to start by talking, we'll talk K.J. Jefferson from Arkansas. K.J. Jefferson's had a really couple, or uh, last good uh, couple years. Jefferson is a guy that really can extend plays. He moves well in the pocket. Jefferson, the guy, though, he's not, he wasn't as good a thrower as I thought when you really break down his tape. Uh, he is a guy, he can he can make a lot of throws you want uh, in a quarterback, but he's just not super accurate as far, he's not, he's not really consistently accurate. Like, he can't hit the deep ball, it's not super consistent. I like the way he can navigate, move in the pocket. He's got good size, he's a good runner, he's a physical runner. Um, a really good overall player. I think KJ Jefferson's more of a, a good college quarterback. I think he's a guy that can project well to be a solid backup just because, uh, like say, I think he could be a good backup for Lamar Jackson in the NFL someday or in an offense that has a running quarterback and you need like a, a good backup uh, that can run with some physicality. Kind of reminds me a little bit of a poor man's Cam Newton, uh, Jefferson, uh, just the way, you know, the physical running. Uh, the ability to you know make some throws on the run, uh, you know the movement in the pocket um, where he can like break tackles, uh, you know can throw with a guy kind of hanging on him a little bit. Uh, some of the stuff you know Big Ben, uh, Cam Newton used to do. So yeah, I don't mind KJ Jefferson. Um, I think he's a, a really good player. I think I have a good year next year with Arkansas. Uh, but as far as like his his projection to the NFL, I think that. Um, I think he's a more of a good college quarterback and a guy that, um, you know, kind of projects well to a backup. <clears throat> the next guy, Quinn Ewers, is one of the more interesting guys in this draft. Quinn Ewers, five-star quarterback, started his career at Ohio State. Ewers is a guy, though, I like that he can throw from different arm angles. He's got a strong arm. Um, he has really good control of the ball. That's one thing you notice about Quinn Ewers. Uh, whether he's rolling to his right, rolling to his left, it seems like the ball, the release is almost always the same, even when he's in kind of like an awkward throwing position. So, yeah, I'm a fan of what Quinn Ewers can do. He's got pretty good size. He has all the – you see why Quinn Ewers was a five-star quarterback, one of the top quarterbacks quarterbacks coming out of high school he has all the intangibles it's just a matter of consistency and growth because last year it was his red shirt freshman season he's only going to be a red shirt sophomore this year really didn't play at all at ohio state in 2021 so this is a i've said this before this is a really telling uh year for quinn ewers this year if he really wants to make a statement and uh and really put a stamp on his nfl draft stock and get into the conversation as a, a top two or three quarterback because right now, for me, for me, if you're going based on film or based on, um, with all things considered, setting aside some of his, you know, his elite skill set or his very good skill set, I would say Quinn Ewers is probably the fourth quarterback in this draft. I'll get to the the guys who I think are ahead of him, but yeah, Ewers. There's a lot to like, but there's things he has to work on. There's things he's got to improve on. So, yeah, Ewers is fun to watch, um, and uh, yeah, I want to see him. Uh, you just he's a guy that you just want to see more games and he's the ultimate example of why uh you love to have three years of tape on this guy and, and in this case like this is likely you know you likely only get you know two true year, two years of tape um so yeah quinn ewers um another guy that's going to be up there uh quarterback out of texas uh so the next guy bo nix uh bo nix oregon guy that started his career at auburn former five-star quarterback Bo Nix, I'll say this about Bo Nix. You, this guy has really legit speed. He's got acceleration. This guy picks up yardage in a hurry. And, uh, yeah, Bo Nix, he's a, he's a very exciting player to watch. He can throw. He throws very ac accurately rolling to his right. And uh, he's got a strong arm. He's got a lot, of, a lot stronger arm than I thought. You know, just watching him on TV, uh, you see him make a lot of throws. But when you really dive into his tape, he's got a stronger arm than you think. And I like that there's a lot of – he's very conservative with, with throwing the deep ball. And what I mean by that is there's times that, um, you know, he kind of throws it and just like, you know, make sure his release is smooth and kind of, you know, it's, it slows down his motion to make sure that the throw is accurate. And sometimes you'll see a guy just like, you know, wind up and completely uncork it on the deep ball and overshoot him. He Sometimes he'll underthrow the deep ball, but I'd rather have – you know, if a guy's wide open, sometimes it's better to just underthrow and make sure that the ball is uh, securely caught for a 40, 45 yard game as opposed to, you know, risk over, you know, 
uncorking it where you hit the guy in stride for a 60-yard touchdown, but then there's a chance you could overthrow it. So, yeah, I like that about Bo Nix. Very comfortable rolling to his right. He's a lot more comfortable throwing, rolling to his right as opposed to his left. But, yeah, Bo Nix is a guy that you love. I love his competitiveness. I think Oregon was a really good fit for Bo Nix. I actually kind of questioned how he would do at Oregon. Um, I thought if it didn't work out at Auburn. Um, but it turns out, you know, I think a lot of the success Auburn had was more predicated because, you know, Bo Nix was so good as opposed to, you know, he was holding back the team from success, uh, if that makes sense. Because I thought – so I thought Auburn would be fine without Bo Nix, but it turns out that you know Auburn almost needed Bo Nix as, as much as uh, Bo Nix needed Auburn. So yeah, Auburn kind of is taking a step back, and uh, Bo Nix has found a has found a nice role uh, as a starting quarterback of the Oregon Ducks, playing for Dan Lanning, uh, an excellent uh, football coach, excellent recruiter, and uh, yeah, Oregon's got some good skill around him, uh, but it's not like top end level skill uh, where it's where you really question maybe that's just, you know, he's more of a beneficiary of talent around him. Uh, Troy Franklin, the receiver they have that I've touched on, is a really nice player. But, yeah, Bo Nix, he's exciting to watch. Strong arm. Uh, very, very anxious to see what he does this year. Bo Nix, I forget what he's at, the consensus right now. Uh, but for me, he would be my number three quarterback. And I'll get to the the, uh, the top two guys shortly, but, yeah. He would come in at my number three, but our, he might become my number two. He's right there, and uh, yeah, he's got a skill set where he could easily improve, and Bo Nix will be a fascinating guy uh, to watch um, as, as the draft talk heats up as we get closer to, as we head into next year's college football season, we head closer to next year's draft. Number two, Michael Penix Jr. Um, from Washington, my number two quarterback, Penix Jr. is just super accurate, whether, you know, short, medium range, the long range accuracy. He's accurate from all levels of the field, uh, is a little a little kind of too much of a, a little a bit of a statue in the pocket. Uh, but, you know, his uh, him being still in the pocket, he also that is also a positive, though, because he throws a lot more accurate when he's still in the pocket. And uh, yeah, Penix, a lefty, started his career in Indiana, transferred this past season to Washington and really took off. Uh, Kalen DeVore and Washington, this offense really got rolling. Um, the question with Michael Penix, I think, especially if Romo Dunze, McMillan, some of those guys are top receivers, the question will be, was uh, Penix more of a beneficiary of talent around him or is he really just that good of a player? But Michael Penix is exciting to watch and Washington's going to be Washington was a really good team this past year and they're going to be a really good team this year. So yeah, there a lot of experts I know, not just me, a lot of experts have Michael Penix as the number 2 quarterback right now and I think he will be the number 2 quarterback in this draft. Um some other guys, Drake May from North Carolina. Drake May is the consensus number 2 quarterback. He's a consensus number 3 overall player right now. Drake May though, he's got the size you like. Uh, can make throws on the run, stands tall in the pocket, uh, can throw with touch, especially over the middle of the field. Uh, I like that he can put it up high um, with uh, one of the, with his taller receivers that can jump where only they can get it. Uh, you saw the North Carolina offense really take off uh, when Drake May was in. I first watched him in the Oregon game this season, uh, the bowl game, and uh, was super impressed. I had not that was really the first exposure I had of Drake May, excuse me. And uh yeah, you can I don't think I don't think Drake May will be the second quarterback over off the board. I don't think he will be the third overall pick. But I think that um I think there would be a discussion um whether he is a top you know about him being a top 3 quarterback and uh yeah, I mean he does the 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 tools are all there. I think I just think he his upside is not as high as as Michael Penix, Bo Nix, or uh, the number one guy Caleb Williams. So yeah, I don't have to I don't really have to talk Caleb Williams too much. Uh, if you've watched you know maybe a minute or two of his highlights, you it's it clicks for you how good Caleb Williams is. Or if you watched him play uh, this year at USC, but yeah, Caleb Williams uh, does a lot of things like Mahomes uh, can throw on the run. Um, really can just can really you know push the ball, 
make you know throw it throw it on a rope from you know short range medium range short range and medium range is almost just like a re, it's like automatic for Caleb Williams uh, can throw accurate on, on the deep ball uh, can throw across the field uh, can make throws on the run can scramble has got pretty solid speed navigates the pocket well uh, can feel where the pressure is coming from so yeah the tools are all there for Caleb Williams he's got pretty good size too he's got experience um, three you know several years now uh, became the starter um, early in the season in 2020 after he replaced Spencer Rattler uh, was at Oklahoma transferred in 2000 uh, this past year to USC he's played under Lincoln Riley a guy that knows a thing or two about coaching up quarterbacks so yeah Caleb Williams the consensus number one quarterback um, right now and uh, I'll throw a few more guys out. Spencer Rattler. Spencer Rattler I've talked about in this channel. Spencer Rattler, um, he's got a, a really good arm. Um, the short and medium range accuracy is really good. He's got one of my favorite releases. It's very fluid. Uh, it's quick. You know, it's over the top. It's not elongated. And, uh, yeah, so Spencer Rattler, uh, a fascinating story, getting benched at Oklahoma by Caleb Williams, uh, transferring to South Carolina, where you saw, you know, in the middle of the season, things really clicked for South Carolina, and you saw uh, him, Antoine Wells, and some of the, the talented guys really get on a roll. So, yeah, he's a – Spencer Rattler, interesting guy, interesting story, and uh, like Quinn Ewers, this is a going to be a very telling year uh, for him. Uh, some other guys. So J.J. McCarthy from Michigan. J.J. McCarthy, uh, former five star, um, was a is a a must a must uh, needed recruit uh, for Michigan as Michigan has really uh, been starved for a top end quarterback. And you saw uh, McCarthy uh, play uh, a little bit uh, as a backup in the 2021 season behind Cade McNamara and then in 2022 uh, win the starting job early on and have a really uh, nice year in 2022 I think um, it wasn't as good as I, I think mo I, I don't know I shouldn't sit, speak for all Michigan fans but I think some Michigan fans would say he could have played better this year uh, had a little bit of a rough game in the TCU game with turnovers um, I think McCarthy did a lot of what he needed to do to win games. Uh, but you see, his release is kind of a, it is a elongated release. Uh, but he does he get, can put some zip on the ball. He's accurate from the short and long range. Uh, he is a really good athlete. He can scramble. He's got good speed. He's actually got uh, pretty good play strength to break tackles uh, when he does scramble. So, yeah, this will be... Um, It'll be fun to watch and see what he does in 2023. Shine in some big games. The Ohio State game um, won a Big Ten championship for him. Uh, played well in that game in the win over Purdue. So, yeah, he's played well in some big games. Uh, shined in, in both games against Ohio State, even though in 2021 he didn't play as much, but made uh, big-time throws when he came in and when he was called upon in that game. So, or and also in the, in the games in 2021 when he was called upon. So yeah, that's it. That's what I wanted to get to uh, with the quarterbacks. So let's transition into some of the top running backs. So I haven't talked running backs yet on this channel. But yeah, this running back class, I was not expecting it to be as good as last year, but it might it might be it might be better. And I don't even I'm not even joking when I say that. Like Rocket Sanders, Raheem Sanders from Arkansas. There was a few guys. Braylon Allen. I went in watching their tape, and I was blown. I, you know, I watched these guys a little bit. I didn't watch a lot of Arkansas, Wisconsin. But Rocket Sanders is just a fun guy to watch. You get flashes of Marshawn Lynch when you see this guy. This guy just refuses to be tackled. Like this guy, he runs like his life depends on breaking it, breaking tackles. I mean, this he is physical, um, changes direction pretty well, quick, effective cuts. Um, he's got a, he's got a stiff arm. He can break multiple tackles on a given play. I think his vision's underrated. He's got really good vision. Uh, can read when the hole's going to open up. He does have good patience too. So yeah, and and he can break longer runs too. Like he's not he doesn't have elite speed. Like I don't think he's going to clock three four three. But I think he is is he probably in the mid four fours? I would say most likely. So yeah, Rocket Sanders. Rocket Sanders is a fun watch. If you haven't seen his highlights, go watch him. And uh, yeah, this I, I hope he's a focal point of this Arkansas offense. And uh, the Arkansas backfield's fun to watch with uh, KJ Jefferson and uh, and Rocket Sanders. 
So the next guy, we'll talk Blake Corum uh, for the Michigan Wolverines. Blake Corum had a really good season this past year. Uh, got hurt in the Illinois game, but before that was, you know, was arguably up there for in the, uh, you know, as far as one of the guys that would have a, had a good shot at winning the Heisman. Blake Corum, just excellent vision. You can tell he's been coached up well uh, by Mike Hart, the running backs coach. Um, He's a you know a shorter guy, compact but super strong. Uh, I love that Blake Corum with with his thick body, he can just slip arm tackles with ease. Uh, can break longer runs. He's got pretty good speed, um, and uh, yeah, he was just his patience is outstanding too. He can read where the hole's going to open up. Corum's got good hands out the backfield, um, and uh, he will he can he competes and he's tough and he can run with some physicality too for being a, a smaller guy. So yeah, Blake Corum, as a Michigan fan, he is, you know, he he is he's a he's a fan favorite just the way he competes and brings it. And a guy that's now played has even though he didn't really um he didn't he didn't really become the the main starter, uh, get the you know the bulk of the carries until this year in 2022, but he's been um, 2020 Got some carry, got some work as a true freshman, and, and got some carries in 2021. Even though Hassan Haskins uh, was the starter for Michigan, so yeah, he has experience playing too. Next guy is Trey Benson from Florida State. Trey Benson, a lot like Raheem Sanders. This guy just it makes you wonder if his life depends on breaking tackles. Benson kind of almost kind of reminds me of a mix of Quorum and Raheem Sanders because he's got um, you know excellent vision. Uh, he's compact, super thick thighs. Uh, I'd I wouldn't say mix. I say he's like Quorum and Raheem Sanders, just because they're you know, <clears throat> excuse me, they're come, their legs are thick, strong build, and uh, yeah, Benson can break multiple tackles. Uh, you see him get involved in the kick return game. He's an explosive uh, kick returner. Returned a kick for a touchdown in the Boston College game. So yeah, Trey Benson, uh, the former Oregon transfer, is going to be one of the top running backs. He's lower down the list right now, the consensus, but I think he's going to rise, and uh, I think a lot of people are going to fall in love with Trey Benson. Lean, thick, good, strong, muscular build, but also lean too, and uh, especially strong in the lower body, like I said, with Raheem Sanders and Blake Corum. So another guy from Michigan, Donovan Edwards. Donovan Edwards what stands out is his receiving ability, and I talked with my dad. This guy... He is almost he Donovan Edwards probably could be a slot receiver at Michigan and be a really good one and get drafted and uh, and start and be a solid to good starting slot receiver in the NFL but can run between the tackles. Edwards though, he's a guy that when he gets a an open a crease or an opening or gets in the open field, you really can see the acceleration in the open field. Uh, you saw it in the Ohio State game, just ask Ohio State. Uh, when he gets in the open field, he can break long runs, and uh, that acceleration is, is certainly on display. <clears throat> so, yeah, Donovan Edwards, super fun player. Him and Blake Quorum are going to be a really good combination. It'll be fun to see two Michigan players uh, as two of the top running backs in the country. So next, uh, another guy, Travion Henderson. Travion Henderson, uh, former five-star running back recruit out of high school. He plays for the Ohio State Buckeyes, uh, number 32. Was injured a little bit this year. Had a really productive year in 2021 as a true freshman. Henderson, he's got good vision. He moves laterally super well. That helps him to, to kind of find a lane. Um, He's a good, you know, Ohio State runs a lot of zone uh, running plays, and he does a good job of finding the hole. Uh, but I think he fits as a, as a zone runner or in a man scheme just because, uh, you know, how he can he moves side to side, quick, you know, quick cuts. Does have some some good acceleration, some, some pretty good long speed as well. Travion Henderson, just a, a good all-around back, a lot like um, – like Quorum and Edwards, he is good out the backfield. He's got good hands, guy that can run routes, gets open. And, uh, yeah, when he's healthy, he is a he's a difference maker for the Ohio State Buckeyes. I'm excited to see uh, what he does as just a only a true junior in 2022. Uh, so some more got Will Shipley from Clemson. Will Shipley. Boy, I didn't. I didn't really. Will Shipley is another guy. When you dive into his tape, you really get more of appreciation for his skill set. Excellent receiver, uh, can adjust to the ball. He's a guy that he runs downhill hard. Will Shipley can run with some power. He's not just a. He's not just a a scat back. Will Shipley can get downhill. He's a really good athlete. You see, he can hurdle defenders. 
Um, Will Shipley, he uh, his acceleration is really good too. Um, Ken, a guy that can break multiple tackles, like Raheem Sanders, he's got some kick return ability. But yeah, Will Shipley, excellent player, former five star running back. Uh, you see some several of the five star guys uh, from a couple from the 2021 class um, really up there making an impact. Henderson, Shipley, Donovan Edwards, all five star guys, and you see they're going to be in the discussion uh, as some of the top guys. But yeah, um, Will Shipley. What else? What else do I want to say about Will Shipley? Um, I say there was some games he really took over. Uh, I think in the Syracuse game, he was a true difference maker. Uh, I'd say he's been a true difference maker overall for Clemson. Uh, he's definitely a guy that his acceleration is, you know, his speed and acceleration is, is kind of low key. He really picks up yardage in a hurry. He's a guy that, you know, can get 10 yards and you kind of just like, dang, did he just get 10 yards there? That's Will Shipley. So, yeah, Will Shipley hopefully should be a focal point of the Clemson offense. Once again, hopefully Clemson feeds him this year. Um, I know they got a couple other good backs, but yeah, they have to make sure that Will Shipley touches the ball, not only running between the tackles, but they got to get him the ball out the backfield. Uh, he's also good at, you know, getting the ball in screens. He knows, how, you know, knows where blockers are going to set up and he knows how to uh, get open in space. Um. Yeah, so other running backs, Braylon Allen for Wisconsin. Braylon Allen, you know, Braylon Allison, Braylon Allen, excuse me, might be my favorite running back of all of them. He's got an excellent stiff arm. He's got really good burst. And when he gets to the outside, he can pick up yards in a hurry. Like, I'm sure at the combine, his 10-yard split is going to be excellent. Uh, so, yeah, big fan of Braylon Allen. He's a guy that, you know, Wisconsin hasn't been as good the last couple years, so he hasn't really kind of got – he hasn't really gotten necessarily the credit. Um, like, he's his stats and his plays kind of, you know, went under the radar a little bit. But this year, you know, Luke Fickle coming in, hopefully the Wisconsin offense uh, is improved to get better quarterback play. You know, defenses are more honest. But you saw even though they got blown out in the Ohio State game, he still had like 100 and some – yards rushing broke broke a long run it's a guy that yeah he certainly can break long runs i think he was at 80 is like a 90 plus yard run he had against illinois state so yeah i mean braylon allen checks off all the boxes lean muscular build i think his trick his all his combined traits i think he'd have the highest score uh when i do a grade so yeah braylon allen would be my number one running back um in this draft trayvon henderson is the consensus number one but yeah i think um Braylon Allen would be my number one. So, yeah, touch on. Uh, we'll uh, we'll shift gears here to uh, to linebacker. I just want to talk a little bit more. I don't want to talk too many linebackers. I'll throw some names out. Jer uh, Jer both the Clemson guys are really good. Jeremiah Trotter, um, another guy that's really good uh, that I want to talk about is Barrett Carter. Barrett Carter is just an excellent linebacker for Clemson. They ask him to do a lot of things, cover, blitz. He can do all those very well. He's got a strong muscular build. When he blitzes, he can really just you know overpower running backs. Um, he's a really good wrap-up tackler. He's got excellent burst, uh, can just close on ball carriers in a hurry. And uh, yeah, he can he can cover man to man too. And you see, he can jump crossing routes. He's got good hands to come down with interceptions. I think Barrett Carter is a consensus number three linebacker right now. I think he should be the number one linebacker. So yeah, I just wanted to touch on that. Wanted to talk some quarterbacks, running backs for this upcoming NFL draft. So thanks for tuning in to the Brand Partial Show. Make sure to stay tuned for more episodes of clips from the show. Till next time, peace.